if you see me sitting down that means i'm about to spill some very serious tea tea is about to be spilled so grab a seat sit down because we are getting all up in there all inside the pepinins we are inside the vajayj all the way in the vagina today okay i'm warning you i am warning you this girl talk is about to get so real so real Hey gorgeous and welcome to my channel. I'm Kupana Shimage and this is how I do things. The show where you send me your questions and I let you know how I would do things and I can take this as entertainment, use it as advice, use it, don't use it, take it, don't take it at all. Do you know why? Do you know why? Because it's not me. Heck, not a professional. I'm not a professional whatsoever. I'm just letting you know what I would do if I was in your shoes. Hunties, we've spoken about pre-game before in terms of what should you do before you jump into bed with your man now let's talk about post game what are you supposed to do after the loving has gone down i'm talking from immediately so you guys have just reached the ultimate peak of <sighs> right what do you do from that moment onwards? This video is very TMI. This video is all up in the girl talk. So please, please, please be prepared. I am warning you right now. This is a TMI conversation. I'd love to restrict it to 18 and I'd love to only speak about sex within the context of marriage because that's how I like to talk about sex. However, I don't know where you've been, girl. I don't know what your sexual life is all about. <laughs> We're all from different walks of life and I think it's an important conversation for us to have. We're all free to decide how you want to engage in sex and who you want to have sex with. So for whatever reason that you are here, above 18, below 18, whether you are married or not married, but you are still having sex and enjoying it, then this conversation is for us all. So I'll be speaking about sex from all perspectives and talking about what we should be doing and what we should be worried about after we have sex literally from the very second everything has gone down these are the things that i would do like i said i am not a professional not a healthcare professional i'm just a girl you know just a girl just saying girl if i if me and you let's just talk as sisters this is what i would do or this is what i do do immediately after we do the deed number one constantly 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 get tested when V and I got into our relationship, this was, I think, before we started getting sexually active together, we went for multiple tests. We have this book, which is like our journal, our relationship journal. And in the relationship journal, we actually have our HIV tests in there. And when you're a female, you actually want to worry about your vagina a lot. The vajayj, the girl, the coochie is so important because Sex is just an outlet for bacteria. It's an outlet for you to get a whole lot. STIs, STDs, and other infections and other things that can happen to make your vagina unhappy. Personally, I sit on the wrong toilet and my vagina is just like, screw you girl, here's an itch, here's a smell, here's some cottage cheese. Like literally, my vagina, I get yeast infections like that. So my toilets my you know you can you can literally have an unhappy vagina from the wrong condom so you want to get tested not just for hiv and aids you also want to make sure that you're getting tested for other stis and stds you also want to make sure that your vaginal health is happy so your relationship with your gynecologist is your number one relationship because this vagina has to continue enjoying sex for a very very long time and if you want that to happen you have to have a good relationship with your girl and you have to have a good relationship with the virginius you know what a virginia is a virginius is vagina genius and those are gynecologists those are the people who know more about vaginas than most of us do so please do invest in finding one that you're really happy with and also just making sure you have a really good conversation with your gynecologist let them know that i am sexually active that i do need a pap smear and what do i need to know about sex before i get into it and 
if you do have a fussy JJ like I do, find out what the possible causes may be. It could be how you are going to gym, that you may be wearing underwear that is too tight, maybe you need to go to sleep without any underwear on. There could be a whole lot of things that you could do for your own vaginal health. So whoever your sexual partner is, even if it's at the beginning of your marriage, okay? Believe me, even if it's at the beginning of your marriage and you have not been sexually active with your husband until the time you become married you do want to get tested for the both of you just so you know we've gone for about four or five tests together like after each other throughout the whole relationship even after we went through our celibacy stage it was a thing of okay we need to know where we are in terms of our status so we know that we're not putting each other at danger and that we completely trust each other as well okay number two let's get into the deed so before getting into the deed we know we are healthy we are happy with where we are from our health right now you've done the deed and you have just both <sighs> right what do you do you need to keep it clean this is like the first five seconds after everything is done you need to keep it clean man might still be inside of you you see tmi alert tmi alert so the man is still inside of you and there are three situations that could happen he could either have a condom he could either not have a condom and you are not trying to fall pregnant and you not have a condom and you are trying to fall pregnant so now either way if a man comes inside of you you have with a condom without a condom if it comes inside of you there's always a chance of you falling pregnant because the condom can burst um there's so many things that can happen trust me contraceptives only have so much efficacy condoms tear all the time so if you're having sex just know that there is a possibility i could fall pregnant even if you're on contraceptives it lessens the chance but you still can and if you can fall pregnant sperm is much bigger than any other infection that actually lives one single sperm is bigger than for example a cell that could actually make you sick down there so you're not just protecting yourself against pregnancy but there are other things that you're protecting yourself against as well and that's why you want to get, get tested so we're here we've just done the deed and the man has got a condom on or you as a female have got a condom on keep it clean usually what happens is the man will get out and he'll go remove it in the bathroom Personally, I think you should go do it in the bathroom. I don't think you should be removing the condom in the bed There's a possibility you could spill something and then the bed gets messy. I'm a clean bed type of girl I don't want to get any fluids on the bed if we can avoid getting fluids on the bed. I will avoid it. Okay then there is for that lady who he has come inside of you you guys aren't using protection for example we're married we don't use protection um and now you're at a place where it's just like okay as soon as he comes out they will be fluids your fluids his fluids female fluids tend to get all over the bed especially if you're the type of person who gets quite wet but once he's come inside of you when he pulls out the possibility of fluids is always there so keep a towel close by so when he comes out you scoop it up and make sure that your bed isn't wet and when you come back to sleep you don't have any random weird wet patches all over the bed okay that's just me <laughs> i like to keep the clean personally other people are fine having just marks all over the bed find it sexy i don't find it sexy if i've got my own sexual fluids all over the bed during the whole thing going on that's fine you can't avoid that if, if it's splish splashy in the bed you can't avoid it but after he comes inside of you you can you know mitigate you can try to decrease the amount of fluids floating around in the bed by just having a towel close by just to make sure that as he comes out you just scoop it up and you make sure that you are semi clean this is the first layer of cleanness for you okay so if you're using a female condom you might actually want to take it off while you're lying down as opposed to taking it off after you stand up because what can happen is when you stand up that ninjas come out and there you go you've got a messy bed or a messy floor so you can tilt it upwards because what happens to the female condom is that it has a ring that stays on the outside so you can tilt it upwards and then pull and close right so twisting to close it up so sometimes some women will twist it before getting it out but that can also lead to some spillage so try and pull it upwards 
pinch and then pull the rest out that way you won't spill before getting to the bathroom with men on the other hand it just stays on with quite a lot of men as they go to the bathroom so they are able to do it as they leave as opposed to doing it in the bed number three all right so we've done our preliminary cleaning in the bed now we're going to go and clean out the bladder so you want to pee before getting in bed with your man and you also want to pee and clear out your bladder afterwards as well i used to be very prone to utis at the beginning of our relationship because you know they usually say that once you're in a relationship once you get married you guys are getting on like bunnies and then you get prone to UTIs, which is a urinary tract infection. So what you do want to do after you have sex with your man is just to go pee. Personally, what I like to do is I will sit. Girl, I get there and I'll just chill. I'll just, I give it a few minutes. <laughs> this is after I've wiped myself with a towel from the bed. I would sit on the toilet seat, chill. Decide on my life. You know, I'm just listening to my body sitting on the toilet seat you know maybe there might be some ninjas still stuck in there push them out i also want to see if i've got any pee in my system if i do sometimes it takes a bit of time for the pee to work its way down from the bladder and get out so i chill for about five minutes i'll be on the toilet seat making sure if there's any extra fluids coming out now this just leads me to the next point number four you want to pay attention to color, smell, and sensation. You want to pay attention to any color down there. Now, as women, when we get wet, our, or sex, our sexual fluids, right? So when you get horny and you get wet and you have fluids coming from your body during intercourse, that is usually clear. Clear, literally you wipe down there, it should be clear. It's not cloudy, it's not, it's clear, okay? It's clear and it's kind of like egg, the egg white part before it gets cooked, kind of looks like that. So it's kind of sticky-ish um, and it's clear in color, all right? And it's nice and, um, like I said, like the egg. So it's, 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 it's not rough, it's, it doesn't have little beads or anything inside. It's usually just clear, smooth and kind of sticky. That's what it feels like or looks like, right? So if you rub it in between, if you wipe down there and it's clear and you rub the, to the toilet paper, you can kind of feel that it's gooey, <laughs> if that's the word. So a man's sexual fluids on the other hand, that's white. So a lot of the times, once you've been sitting on the toilet, what I usually find is that any of his sexual fluids will come out, but I might still be a little bit wet with my own sexual fluids. And, that's, and that is clear, right? That is a more, you know the more gooey clear one and then the man is white so what you're trying to look for is anything cheesy cottage cheesy so any lumpy white or off-white bits that's when you should kind of worry because that is usually like a yeast infection or any other infection so if it's any other color other than clear or milky white right so if you have and, and the consistencies of both female and male sexual fluids are usually smooth. So you know, they're not lumpy, they don't have little bits in them. So once you wipe and you start to see that there's something that feels a bit cheesy, a bit cottage cheesy, a bit dryish, if you can feel that there's a different consistency to it, then it might be something that you want to look out for, take note, and then maybe in the morning or a few hours later, if you're getting in the evening or in the morning, or whatever, whatever time of the day you like it, girl. You want to look out for that consistency again. Smell, it should not smell kind of weird. Some women know how their men's sexual fluids smell, which is really awesome. But if it doesn't smell like your usual self and it doesn't smell like your man, but it smells a bit fishy or it smells like a little bit of cabbage or a little bit of off fruit, then you also need to pick on pick up on that look out for it a little bit later and see if you need to consult a doctor about it. So any colors or any smells that are off, you need to pay attention to those. And then sensation. Is there a tingle? If you feel a tingle, you do want to talk to your man about it and tell him that, mm, I felt this tingly sensation, boo. You know, let's look out for it. If you do have a little bit of a tingly sensation when you are peeing, kind of normal, that's a pee sensation, but what you do want to look out for is at the back, in the vaginal hole, is there a little bit of a pee of a you know a little bit of a 
tingly, itchy sensation. Those are things that you should take note of. If you feel them again, you definitely need to go talk to your doctor about it. Whether it is a GP, you know, just a normal family doctor, or whether you want to go see your gynecologist, then you just want to see someone if there's any smell, any funny sensations, and any funny colors down there. Right, so we have cleaned out ourselves from the bed. We have sat, we have peed, and obviously after you pee, you've got a wipe down there. The final part of cleaning is number five, which is to actually use water to clean your vagina out. It is important because there's so much bacteria that can go up there and that's how we get silly infections. Okay, so you want to keep your vagina happy by just taking a cloth with some hot water and just wiping it down. So after you've peed, after you've used your towel, just take a cloth and wipe it down. This seems like a lot, but honestly, this is a two minute thing. <laughs> this whole thing, once you've wiped yourself in the, in the bath or once you've wiped yourself in the bed, You've sat and you've had your pee, you just wanna go and wipe yourself with a nice warm hand cloth or towel just to make sure you get rid of all of those hokaikis, sexual fluids, so you're not sleeping with anything and then you wake up looking all dry and crusty down there. Girl, let's just keep it clean, keep it clean. It's the final step, is just to wipe yourself down with something that is a bit wet. Some girls, when they go have their overnight bags, they might want to have a wipe in their bag. That is also a very good thing to do. Have your female wipes just to wipe off the area, especially around your vaginal area, just to make sure that you've gotten rid of all of that goodness and you're clean. We like being clean. Don't just wanna carry things with you the whole time. Number six, do not douche. A lot of women swear by douching, don't douche. So what does douching do? So basically it is like a pulp or a little thing that can squirt water up your vagina and then squirting that water up your vagina cleans it and it comes back out. The problem with that, and sometimes some women might squirt other things up the vagina to clean it out and bring it out. This is not the same as vaginal steaming. Douching is you introducing external fluids that might be water or anything else up the vagina. And what that does, it completely sets the vagina off balance. The vagina knows how to clean itself. So when you douche, you're now introducing a whole new pH balance. You are now taking away certain things that the vagina wanted to keep inside the vagina and it gets all confused. And this confuses your vagina to a point where you can actually introduce new bacteria which will cause a problem, which you wouldn't have had the problem if you didn't douche in the first place. So please, 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 if you do like to douche, please speak to your doctor about it first before you continue to douche. I personally don't recommend it from what I know and what I've heard. So you go and consult and just get clear on douching because quite a few people just say don't douche. Number seven is one that I actually learned more recently, which is to drink water after the deed. Get some, some water. Mm -hmm. So you want to drink water after the deed because you are dehydrated, girl. You've been sweating, it's been some physical exercise, and it's been good in the bed, right? So, you know, you've been sweating, now you've gone to the gym. You've gone to the, the bedroom gymnastics, and now you are not, no, the bedroom gymnasium. <laughs> gone to the bedroom gymnasium and now you've come back your body is completely dehydrated and you're not going to replenish yourself come on girl one thing that we do not actually think about is that we're also hydrating the vagina <laughs> did you know that the vagina also gets thirsty every part of your body gets hydrated from your fingertips to your hair to your skin including the vagina also get some water, also get some internal hydration. I didn't know that. So if you do experience vaginal dryness after, if you've been quite sexually active and you've been realizing that I feel like I've got a dry vagina, drink more water. And especially after getting down and dirty with your man, drink some water just to replenish your body as a whole. But also remember that as your entire body gets water and gets hydrated, your vagina gets hydrated too. Number eight, wear loose clothing afterwards. So if you are in the house or if you're going to bed because it's nighttime, I prefer to go commando, meaning no underwear. No underwear. Why do I need underwear? It's my husband. It's my bed. 
I don't need underwear. I just don't see why I need to wear underwear after having good good with my man. So I just don't wear underwear. But if you do want to wear underwear or if you do want to wear something afterwards, wear clothing that lets air in. So cotton underwear and clothing that is open. So you might want to wear a dress like this one, dressed by Armour Designs. Yes, love it. Or you want to wear anything that just lets the breathing in and out. So try and avoid Spanx, try and avoid shapewear, stockings, anything that kind of holds in and congests that area. After you have sex, you want that area to breathe. So yes, you can wear underwear, but try and keep it loose so that there is that breathability happening downstairs. Number nine for my girls who like to get down and dirty with extra toys and reinforcement in the bed, clean those things immediately afterwards. You don't want it to sit with any of those sexual fluids and gather even more bacteria and get dirty. So please, immediately afterwards, it seems like a lot of admin, but you really do want to make sure that this is happening. Please, please, please clean your sexual toys, your sex toys immediately afterwards. The same time that you're cleaning yourself with water, you get some soap, you get some water and wipe down on the things that you need to. If you need to get some antibacterial wipes so that you can wipe on those things, do so. Let them air dry and then put them away for your next sexual encounter. It's very important that when you do have sex toys that they are clean and they are hygienic and that they are sterilized so you don't introduce anything funny for both you and your man. And finally, number 10. It may seem like a repetition, but it is important for you to pay attention to this before and after you get down and dirty with your man. And that is to pay attention to your JJ and to always consult with your doctor. Remember, the smell, the itch and the color, you always want to continue to look at that after any sexual activity and you want to make sure that you're constantly consulting with your doctor or your gynecologist to make sure that your vagina remains happy. Look, introducing sex into your life means that you're introducing a whole lot of danger and bacteria and infections and diseases to your vagina. So you do want to make sure that you're constantly, constantly looking at your little girl, taking a mirror and saying, hi girl, how you doing? It's been so long. Hey, vagina, how you doing? You want to look at it with a mirror. You want to keep it clean. You want to keep it hydrated. You want to also make sure it is constantly looking, smelling good, and that it is healthy. So continue to look at it. Continue to wipe and smell. Continue to feel for any tingly sensations. And continue to talk to your doctor. That is it. That is all I have for you. I'm done. I'm done. I'm finished. That is it. Hope that you enjoyed this video, beautiful people. Please do leave a comment down below with which one you think stood out the most for you. Or if you have any ideas or stories to share about your post game routine, please do leave your comments in the comment section down below. Give this video a big thumbs up. The more thumbs up this video gets, the more women get to see it. If there are no thumbs up, no people see it. It's that, that simple. That's how the YouTubes work, okay? But until next time, gorgeous, thank you so much for watching and thank you for subscribing. I'm Kapanish Megan. This is how I do things.